up to now on the problems that we've been dealing with by direct integration, we've always had very simple body force fields. And uh, I'd like to look at what you have to do if suppose you have a point force applied in the middle of a bar. And this is going to introduce something known as singularity function. So the question is, suppose I have a bar as shown here and I have an applied force P at x equals A and I'd like to solve this problem using the differential equation method. So I'd like to find out what the internal forces, the strains, the stresses, and the motion are using the differential equation. And so to be able to do that, I need an, an effective expression for B of X for this problem. Now, the reality is, is that a point force is an idealization. So you know it's really a distributed load that's distributed locally near X equals A. So we have some kind of distributed load, let's say B of X, and it takes non-zero values for values of X that are very close into A. And the area underneath this curve here has to equal P. So that's what we have in reality, some kind of locally concentrated distributed load. And without knowing the details of that distribution, we'd still like to have a convenient description for this type of loading. So let's start by considering this special function over here. So I have a function, I'm going to call it f epsilon of x. And it is spread out over an area epsilon, so epsilon is going to be a small number and it has a height of 2 over epsilon. Okay, so it's kind of a peculiar function here. Uh, but it's just, you know, it's a straight line that goes up, and it's a straight line that comes down, and this intercept over here is minus epsilon over 2, and this is intercept over here is epsilon over 2. Okay. Now, remember, what I want is a load that's really local to a point. So what I'm going to consider is this function f of epsilon, but in the limit as epsilon goes to zero. So that's going to make the support of the load very, very narrow. It's going to send it to zero. And I'm going to call that function delta of x. So the limit of f epsilon I'm going to call delta of x. And this function has a name. It's known as the Dirac delta function. And it's kind of an odd function. Uh, it's located at x equals zero. And in other words, that's where it's non-zero. It actually has an infinite value at x equals zero but the area underneath the function is always equal to 1. Okay, So you can integrate it, even though it's infinite, you can integrate it and you get a nice finite value. And that's exactly what we need. So for instance, for this problem up over here that I started with, I could use b of x is equal to p times delta of x. And I shifted over to a because I want it to be supported at x equals a. And I scale it by p so that the area is equal to p. So this is one way of representing point forces. And this, the direct delta is known as a singularity function sometimes. Now to be able to use this, we have to know how to integrate it. So let's consider what we have. So I have my function, delta x minus a. So it's, it's 0 everywhere that I'm going. And then when I hit a, it goes off to infinity. And then it's 0. But the integral underneath this function is equal to 1. So let's consider what happens when we try and integrate it. So if I start integrating and I'm and I'm integrating, you know, until I get before I get to a, I'm going to get 0. But as soon as I get to a, I'm going to get a value of 1. And this function is known as the step function or the heavy side step function. It's shifted over to location A. So that's the heavy side step function. It is spelled with an I here. This is actually somebody's name. And H of X itself is a function that is 0 for X less than 0, and it's 1 for X greater than 0. You can define it at x equals 0, but it really is unnecessary. And it really represents something physically that you don't know. In other words, what's happening right in the middle of the jump. OK, now we will also be able or need to be able to integrate this function uh, too. And so if we look at that one, if I'm integrating along, I'm going to have 0 while h is equal the step function is 0. When I get to a, I'm going to get a function that has a straight line slope 
of 1. And we're going to the way we're going to write this is we're going to write this as angle bracket x minus a. And the angle brackets are known as the Macaulay brackets and they're defined as follows. So if I take the angle bracket of any quantity, it's equal to that quantity if that quantity is greater than or equal to 0 and it's 0 if that quantity is negative. And so these are known as Macaulay brackets. So they're just kind of convenient uh, notation that allows us to handle functions that have little kinks and jumps in them. Putting this all together, we now have our integration rules for the singularity function. So if I integrate the delta function, I if I integrate the delta function, I get the step function. If I integrate the step function, I get the Macaulay bracket. And we're doing indefinite integration, so we get the constants of integration. And if I integrate the Macaulay bracket to any power, let's say n, it follows the usual rules of, of integration as, those, as though the Macaulay brackets were standard parentheses. I'll get the Macaulay bracket raised to the n plus 1 power divided by n plus 1 plus the constant of integration. So these are convenient functions for handling cases where you have point forces and you'll have jumps and steps and kinks in the solution. Uh, you can go ahead and use the singularity functions and it uh, greatly simplifies the analysis.